Welcome to the presentation, Introduction to Actuators, produced by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education. In this presentation, you will learn about actuators, what they are, what they can do, and various applications in both the macro and micro scales. Be sure to read the lesson, Introduction to Actuators. The lesson goes into more detail on some of the devices that we discuss in this presentation. An actuator is a device that actuates or moves something. An actuator uses some type of energy to provide motion or to apply a force. For example, an electric motor uses electrical energy to create a rotational movement or to turn an object or to move an object. A gear train uses an input such as mechanical or electrical to move something in a rotary or linear motion. And a screw jack uses manual or mechanical input to create linear motion. So in short, an actuator converts some type of energy into motion. Actuators consist of motors, gears, pumps, pistons, valves, switches, and many other types of devices. The energy used on the input of an actuator determines its classification. For example, manual actuators require a manual or mechanical input. Such actuators include levers and jacks. Hydraulic and pneumatic actuators use pressurized liquid or air to move something. Such devices include pistons and valves. Thermal actuators use hot and cold temperatures. The type of thermal actuator that we will discuss in this presentation is the bimetallic switch. Electric actuators use electricity as the input energy. Such actuators include motors and resonators. Let's start with the discussion of thermal actuators. Thermal actuators are actuators that convert thermal energy into movement. One type of thermal actuator is the bimetallic strip a strip made from two different metals, such as steel and copper. The two metals have different temperature coefficients, which means when heated, they expand at two different rates. The graphic illustrates this. When these two metals are heated, metal two expands more than metal one. Therefore, metal two has a higher temperature coefficient than metal one. Now let's join these two strips together. Since they are joined, and each me metal is expanding when heated, but expanding at different rates, the strip bends. In this case, which direction does the strip bend? If you set upward, you are correct. Since metal 1 does not expand as much as metal 2, one could say it pulls metal 2 upward. This bending is due to thermal expansion. Thermal expansion is the manifestation of a change in thermal energy in a material. A bimetallic switch takes advantage of the thermal expansion effect to generate motion. Two dissimilar strips of metal are joined together along their entire length. When heat is applied, the bimetallic strip bends in the direction of the metal with a smaller coefficient of thermal expansion. Bimetal strips have many uses. One common use is in thermostats used to control the temperature in homes and offices. The diagram shows how a bimetallic strip is used in a thermostat. At temperature 1, the metals of the switch are the same length and the switch is open. As the temperature increases, the metal starts to bend. At temperature T2, the switch makes contact with the electrical contact and current flows through the switch. If the switch controls an air conditioner, the air conditioner will come on at the higher temperature of T2. The thermal switches in the scanning electron microscope image on the right were developed by engineers at the Southwest Research Institute. These micro-sized vertical thermal actuators operate by a differential expansion between two layers of dissimilar materials in each arm of the switch. To attain the initial upward curvature seen in the picture, the engineers took advantage of residual stresses in the film layers used to build the switch. At the micro scale, bimetallic actuators are made using metallic and non-metallic material. A variety of thin films with different thermal expansion characteristics are used to fabricate switches, electrodes, valves, strain gauges, and diaphragms. Electric actuators use electricity or electrical energy to create motion. An electric motor is a type of an electric actuator. 
Most direct current motors, or DC motors, operate by current flowing through a coil of wire, called the rotor, and creating a magnetic field around the coil. The coil is wrapped around the motor shaft and is positioned between the poles of a large permanent magnet or electromagnet. The interaction of the two magnetic fields causes the rotor, the coil, to rotate on its axis, rotating the motor shaft or rotor. Reverse the direction of the current flowing through the rotor, and the rotor will rotate in the opposite direction. Thus, an electric motor is a transducer and an actuator because it converts electrical energy to magnetic energy to mechanical energy or motion. Mechanical actuators convert a mechanical or manual input into linear or rotary motion. A common example of a mechanical actuator is the screw jack or tire jack. The figure shows the screw jack in operation. Rotation of the screw causes the legs of the jack to move upward or move together. Inspecting the motion at the top of the jack, this mechanical rotational input is clearly converted into linear mechanical motion. Mechanical actuators can produce a rotational output with a proper gearing mechanism. An example of a microactuator, or MEMS, is the electrostatic comb drive. Comb drives are used in many MEMS applications, such as resonators, microengines, and gyroscopes. The force generated is low, usually less than 50 micronewtons. However, these devices are predictable and reliable, making them very useful for a, for a variety of micro applications. The image above is an example of a MEMS electrostatic comb drive resonator, which is a common MEMS actuator. A resonator is a device which naturally oscillates at a resonant frequency. The oscillations in a resonator can either be electrostatic or mechanical. As an actuator, this comb drive can move another object at the rate of the comb drive's oscillation. In the Introduction to Actuators unit, you will study a microelectromechanical system that uses comb drives to move an optical mirror. In summary, an actuator is a device that converts energy into motion. It moves something. Actuators can be thermal, electric, manual, or hydraulic and pneumatic. Actuators are found in both the macro and micro scales. Thank you for using the learning modules from the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education.